In today's news, Canelo Alvarez fires back at Conor McGregor. Ahead of his clash against Edgar Berlanga, Alvarez recently explained why a fight with David Benavidez remains on the shelf. He recently said he'd only fight Benavidez if guaranteed a $200 million payday. McGregor scuffed at Alvarez's claims in a recent tweet, saying that Canelo doesn't sell pay-per-views. Then, after yesterday's Alvarez vs. Berlanga pre-fight press conference, Alvarez responded to McGregor's tweet during a brief interview with Abraham Gonzalez, calling Conor his son. Canelo, estaba hablando mucha mierda a Conor McGregor diciendo que tú no puedes vender y que si es un error la que tú estás haciendo en la venta en septiembre. ¿Qué piensas de eso y qué, le, qué mensaje que le dice? Lo que pasa es que le está ayudando a Dana White para, para, para vender la bio, sí, por eso, por eso es lo que está diciendo. Pero él sabe que es mi hijo. <laughs> Sean O'Malley reveals potential opponents after the Marab fight. Speaking on his Timbo Sugar Show podcast, O'Malley said he's got some options after his UFC 306 fight against Vajvili and mentioned Ilya Teporia, Max Holloway, Umar Nurmagomedov, and Davis and Figueredo as potential opponents. Who would you guys like to see O'Malley fight next? I think it, it makes it, it's an interesting match, but O'Malley versus Nurmagomedov. So. Did Dana say that's what's ne what would be next? No, I, I haven't really talked to him. I've uh, Figgy beat Cheeto on the same card. Figgy called me out. That could be next. It, it, I don't know. Max versus Elia is coming up. Would love an opportunity to go up to forty-five. So Max, Elia, Nurmagomedov, Figgy. Like, I got so a lot of options. So I, I feel like I'll be able to make the call out. Obviously, the last fight I beat Cheeto, called out Elia, didn't get that fight. So just because you win doesn't mean you're gonna be able to pick. But I go out there flatline Rab. I feel like that call out will mean something. Depends what happens. Max and Elia fight in October. Maybe Umar and Figgy fight. We'll see. The PFL finally books Francis Ngannou's debut. After nearly 15 months since Francis Ngannou signing with the PFL following his UFC departure, the promotion has finally scheduled his debut. The promotion announced on Wednesday that Ngannou will compete in a mixed martial arts fight at their October 19th pay-per-view event. The Predator will take on Hainan Ferreira, who tore through the 2023 PFL season with three consecutive knockouts. Speaking with MMA Today, Ngannou's head coach, Eric Nixick, said he thought that Francis might never fight again and revealed how he and his team have helped Ngannou to get back in the game after the tragic passing of his baby boy, Kobe. Uh, it's been good, man. It's, it's, you know, I think for us, the fight was um, kind of a, a side project more than it was about healing for Francis after the loss of his son. Um, I never knew if he was going to fight again. I, I didn't know. I didn't really care. I, I just wanted to be there for my friend. That, that was the most important thing. One of the things we talked about was just getting back in the gym and, and getting back to training to try to occupy his mind as best as we could and being around the boys. And I think there was a lot of healing process for him by being back in the room and training. And then, you know, during the weekends, I think you could see the depression come out because he'd be home alone and, and he didn't have anything to do. So he'd come to the house and be around the family. And, you know, everybody everybody rallied around him to just try to get him through this dark time, which I still think he struggles with, of course. And I don't think he's ever going to heal from that completely. But occupying his mind and his time with training, I think, has only helped him and reinvigorated him to come back and, and make this make this fight happen. Um, you know, and the first thing he said to me, he looked at me when we decided that we're going to fight. He said, hey, this one's for Kobe. And I was like, all right, bro. So I know we got, you know, he's, he's focused and I know he's driven and I know what he's fighting for right now. Dana White takes a break from gambling. As many of you know, Dana White thrives playing high stakes games. This includes the game of blackjack. During a recent live stream on Kick with Aiden Ross, the UFC president said that he's taking a break from gambling this month so that he can focus on getting into superhuman shape once more. Yeah, by the way, I wanna, I've been meaning to ask you, how's the gambling been? It's been good. Actually, I had a couple of, uh, I, the last two days I played at Bellagio. No way. Two. No way. Yeah. Two days, two mil. That's actually. And now I, I came here, so I won't play again. I'm thinking about not playing again until September. I probably won't play again until, or until I see you again, maybe. <laughs> well, I'll definitely be down there in September. Wait, so why are you taking a break? Just because, I, you know, I went on vacation and I just started getting back and I'm doing the superhuman again. So I'm just trying to get when you go, you know how it is when you play, you're out till freaking two in the morning. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to wait till September to play. I just want to get get focused on on getting as healthy as I can again. Robert Whitaker explains why he asked for the Hamza Shumayev rebooking. 
Whitaker and Shimaev were scheduled to headline UFC on ABC6 in June, but health issues forced Hamzad out. Whitaker then faced Ikram el in Saudi Arabia instead, knocking him out in the first round. Now, Whitaker and Shimaev are once again set to square off in a three-round bout on October 26th at UFC 308 in Abu Dhabi. Speaking on his MMA Arcade podcast, Rob revealed that he was the one who approached the UFC about putting together the Hamza fight once more. Hear this. Yeah, unfortunately, the business isn't completely run on merit. A lot of it is, but there are a lot of times and moments when it's just not. Chemaev is a hard fight. He's obviously a big draw, especially over there in Abu Dhabi. So he, he's a draw. And I think the UFC, story-wise, wants to see Chemaev get, you know, a shot at the champion or whatever. They want to see Chemaev, mm-hmm. like, up the top of the ladder. They want to see him in that picture. But I love disrupting their plans. I love <laughs> derailing their stories. That's why I took the fight. You know, I asked for the fight I didn't it wasn't really? to me I asked for the fight straight yeah. after the last fight I was like I saw that there was an Abu Dhabi card in October and Palmline fits, fits perfectly and I was like I'll fight Chimaev again yeah. let's do it again just make sure he turns up I look forward to hard fights I look forward to these fights and I know that if I beat Chimaev there is nothing in my way to get in my belt back Chimaev as dangerous as he is I don't go into these fights thinking about what I have to lose I'm going to get in there in October and I'm going to put the one-two how do you deal on him and then <laughs> you know worry about a title shot after that Israel Adesanya apologizes to Algerian boxer Iman Khalif. Khalif was cleared to compete in the women's category by the International Olympic Committee for this year's Olympics. In the past, however, she had a gender test issued by the International Boxing Association, which she failed, leading to her disqualification from last year's Women's World Boxing Championships in New Delhi. However, the International Olympic Committee stripped the International Boxing Association of official recognition and said that they didn't consider their tests valid allowing Iman to compete. Now as the Olympic Games are underway, Khalif has taken a lot of heat from sports fans and athletes who were misled by arbitrary reports and disingenuous social media narratives regarding her gender. In an X post uploaded last week, Adesanya shared a clip of one of Khalif's previous fights captioned, men should not be boxing women, lol, he couldn't even finish her. Anyway, people over politics. Now during an interview on The Rock, Adesanya expressed regret for his comments and apologized to the Algerian boxer. You can watch the full interview on The Rock YouTube channel. The link's in the description below. You know what? From now on, I'll leave women's fights to women. I'm going to leave it to you guys because whenever I try to speak up about it and then apparently... I got it wrong, or a lot of people got it wrong, and there's misinformation. I think I'm a like, lot of people hey, did, man. It's a good yeah, thing that you put this yeah. out there. Well, you know, I know because I, I, I spoke up about it because look, I, I don't like to get triggered, and when something triggers me, and I'm, I'm a fighter, and I saw that I'm just like, what? And I saw the news or the yeah. articles mm-hmm. that I was speaking on. I was like, yeah. why are they letting the trans person? And then I find out later, okay, she wasn't actually a trans. Correct. So to the lady, my bad, I got that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But like. For me, still, there's just all this gray area. Even now, they let there's some yeah. pedo guy compete. That's the worst of all. A convicted yeah. rapist. Yeah, yeah, compete. And I'm yeah. like, wait, so yeah. what? He yeah. served his time, cool, but you're still going to let yeah. him compete in the know. Olympics. Yeah. And that still goes against the guidelines of the Olympics rules. And then also the Olympic ceremony. I put something up with the guy with his nuts hanging out, dancing yeah. behind the kid. <laughs> and there's that. Don't come for me. I don't know nothing. What? I know nothing. But anyway, to the lady, the boxer, I am sorry. I didn't understand what was going on. It's time for today's top memes. Third place was found over on Reddit and was posted by Hennessy74. Second place meme was found over on Instagram and was posted by Daily Dose MMA. And the top pick was found over on Reddit and was posted by Garrett Armfield UFC. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel to keep up with the latest MMA news.